In this video we're going to talk about how to take the Mixamo character templates and add animation to them so that they'll function in your game uh, with some custom content. The default guy has a walk to run and a jump and an attack uh, like so. And uh, what we want to add is the ability to make him wounded. So I've, uh, I'm just showing the end result here. I've created an actor which will cause pain for him and he does a short little burst of pain and he's also got a big pain which is uh... these are coming in randomly so there it goes there's the big pain and he falls on the ground and uh... he'll stay there until you press spacebar and he'll get up again Okay, and when he's dead he will uh, stay on the ground i guess he'll touch a few of these before he dies notice we can still turn around while he's on the ground when he's getting up we can't turn because if you do uh, have him getting up while being able to turn the camera you get some strange updating problems probably those can be fixed but I just thought it's easiest to prevent the input from the player and I think that's him dead, nope he's still going oh now he's dead, right so the camera completely locks off when you die uh, again, this is a choice, and you could set it up in a variety of ways. Okay, so what am I talking about? You can download from the marketplace for Unreal in the launcher the Mixamo Anim Pack. It's a variety of characters that mostly seem to all follow the same skeleton. You can actually interchange the animations from one to another. I'll show you how to set this up first. It's pretty well documented, but just to get rolling on this. I'll pause the download here. How does this work? Um, when you're in the marketplace, you click on the um, free download. It will install, and, and then in your library, it'll show up like so. And so long as you've got a version later than 4.3.1, you can add these to a project. So you'll notice that I just had to install this. That's just because I made this project at work, and now I'm working at home. So I had to download it again once you've added this to a project it will stick within there and you can have you know modifications to all of these in one project that don't really show up in another project um, that said you go add to project and you choose the project you want to add them to and press add to project that's pretty straightforward um, so I've already done that so here's what you get you'll notice that there's a single blueprint which controls the movement logic as it says, for all of the Maximo characters. Okay, I've added a interface called um, Maximo Interface. You add that by going uh, Blueprints, Blueprint Interface, and call it something. And then inside of that, you'd add some functions and so on. I'm just gonna fit that on the screen and I'll delete this one because we don't need it, but we need this one. And so the, the only function that I've added here is one called take damage, and it has a, a integer input which will show up on the function, so that you can pass damage values from something that causes damage to the character. We'll be setting that up later, um, but we need to establish this to begin with. Let's have a look at what you need if you want to actually modify or extend these characters. Um, I've mostly used this guy called Heraklios, and you'll see you get a blueprint for him and a mesh materials and atoms, right? Um, in the mesh folder there's a skeleton and you can actually export this as an FBX to add additional stuff to it. And you can see that this has already been done for, th these are the animations that have been created using this process. So let's just call them uh, base, mix Heraklios base. Save that out and you can then open it in 3D Max or Maya. Alright, I'm using the Student Maya 2015 Educational Purposes one, and uh, I'm still learning Maya. I'm not the greatest Maya user because I spent most of my time in 3D Max. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use actually, but I just want to show all of the features in here. Uh, so you go file, um, make sure first off that you've got a um, plugin running, which is your FBX manager if it's in there somewhere. Um, here it goes FBX Maya and it's ticked on already so it should work fine um, for this. If it's not ticked for you, you just click it on. 
All right, so that will allow you to import FBX files, and we want to bring in. You just import it. So here's the guy. You see, there's no textures or anything, but that's quite okay. First thing we're going to do is just select the mesh, and we'll just make a wireframe render. We can see the bones right, um, underneath, and just you know, always just check that things are skinned up nice. You'll notice that there's no control rig. Okay. Now, Mixamo uh, website provides a free auto rigger for both 3D Match Cat and for the Maya uh, rig creator, and it works really well. The problem is once you create that control rig, you'll kind of be changing your bone system, so that if you were to create an animation with it, it won't match up to the one in Unreal. So, unfortunately, if you want to create an animation here, you have to do it uh, just using local bone transforms. Ideally, you would actually create the rig using the script and, uh, or making your own rig, um, and start from scratch with a character completely new. Uh, this is just like a demo to show some shortcuts, really. Let's create a nice way to select these bones so that we don't have to keep hunting for them. If you go to the animation tab and go to skeleton, okay. If you go to skeleton and search under human IK you'll get this window here and what this does is let you define a custom rig or uh, basically a dude that you can click on to select your character and you just jump into definition and start matching stuff up so we'll start with the head and you just right click and go assign selected bone the nice thing about this is you can once you've got the, the central bones out the way you can grab one arm and make sure it's the right one I guess um, and then assign it will also add an update on the other side of the character let's do the rest there and the legs so this is a reasonably fast thing to do you could go further in and do the fingers and so on I'm just gonna stop at the hand so if you don't want to risk selecting the hand bone and getting the wrong one you can grab the arm and press the up or down arrows so down arrow in this case to go down the chain and there's your um, your hand selection um, so you know you want to test out that it's working seems to be now if you want to add fingers you can add them in this view here but I'm not going to bother because I'm not going to animate the fingers oh let's just do the feet the same way so select the leg press down assign the bone to the foot Okay, so that's the, the nice little setup there. Of course, to make an animation, you probably want to animate from the pelvis. So here's why. If you try to move these bones, they don't like moving. You have to use rotations. You want to be in local transform mode uh, rather than world space, but just for now, I'm not going to trouble myself too much about all that. Um, so a good, a good thing to do is to work from the animation of the hips. So I just press S to keyframe frame one and let's just make a very short animation of him crouching for example. Right? So you'd really want to make sure that the um, pelvis is in the correct place because you can see that the feet have nothing to make them stay on the ground. S to keyframe something, move to the frame which you're aiming for, set it in place and key it again. Right? Uh, there's probably quicker ways to do this. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a Maya animator at all. I'm just doing this as basic as what I can. Now the animation that I'm making is really just a little example. It's not going to be pretty. Let's guess it in there. Anyone who's done any 3D Max animation will notice that when you have a bone that doesn't have a keyframe on zero and you wiggle the, the, the joint, it will create a key on that frame, but also the previous pose on frame zero. Maya doesn't do that, so you have to, you have to keyframe zero as well. And it starts from frame one, not from frame zero. But all that aside, no problem. It's a kind of weird uh, situation here because he's going below the ground. I'll just try and fix that up as best I can. By no means expertly. I just want to get this done really quickly actually. Um, 
you know, it, it's always nice to spend the extra time to do quality because with all the work that you'll spend setting this up, it's a good thing to have a nice example to work with, I suppose. Let's oh, let's just frame him on frame zero so his arms are not in the air. I don't know what the um, idle pose for him is. He's not standing straight up and down like that. So if he was in an idle pose, uh, probably his feet are sort of apart with one facing forwards and one facing slightly out to the side or whatever, and his hips kind of oriented a little bit differently. You will notice a shift if he's um, going to this pose first. So you should try to match to your idle pose, whatever that might be. But yeah, again, just for swiftness. Now that's a crouch, that, that will do just fine. Uh, so the point is just to show that this works. We're not actually going to use this animation in the example. We already have a couple of animations made. To export him, if you go to the outliner, you see that you have uh, the hierarchy for the character and the, and the mesh there. So you can just select the top part and go File, Export Selection, and save it as something. So you know, get your folder sorted out. And then here at Glios, let's call it Crouch, which um, will be fine. Oh, no, one thing to mention. Oh, we've only actually animated 15 frames, so we've got 120 frames on the timeline. It's a very good idea to make it, um, you know, slide like so. I think I might have cancelled the export. So here at Glios Crouch. And uh, voila. Okay, so uh, it does its thing, and then we can jump back into Unreal. I've created it in my own folder for the extra animations that come in, and you can see that one of the cool things is once you've created some animations for one character, for the most part, you can import the same animations onto another skeleton. So how, how does this work? You remember we have a skeleton for uh, each character, so if we go find that other one, uh, there, there's her skeleton, right? So when you import an animation, you can go import to game, and uh, we'll find the crouch there. So this is for her actually, but if we import it, we can choose animation as the type. So we're not importing the skeletal mesh definition, just the animation, and we can choose the character. So I'll choose Maria first, and uh, the time range we're using is the exported time range and we go import and you'll see she's there and um, we can rename this uh, Maria Crouch except she's got make some of Maria uh, prefix or something like that and then save that so now we can bring in with the same animation uh, to the target character, which is Heraklios, and same thing. Alright, so they, they match up nicely. Crouch, crouch, dead, dead, and so on. Okay, I've provided the animation uh, files for this in a document that I'll link into the YouTube when it's posted. They include a, a fall down, a get up, it's a major wounded kind of sequence, uh, on the ground dead, which is really just a frame out of this one, and then a little wounded animation for some variety so we can kind of switch between the two depending on the damage amount when he takes damage. Um, so we probably won't use the crouch in this demo but you can see there. So if you want to test it out double click it you see there it goes. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> He's just looking weird. Um, and you can see all the other animations are listed out. So dead is dead. Uh, fall down falls down. There's actually a little bit of a delay at the start of that. Uh, and then get up again. And then the small wounded, he just uh, takes a bow. And his hand goes through his leg, but you know, that should be fixed in Maya or whatever. These are the ones that come with the um, Maximo asset. So we've added quite a, uh, you know, three or four more uh, into there. And let's move on.